I'm going to have my assistant helping me out with this one. Penny, this example has two objects, so I guess it makes sense that there's two of us here. All right. This is the first example, and it's the only one that we're going to see in this format, um, where there are two objects to ask questions about. Now, the key thing is that the problem is not really any more difficult than it uh, was before. It's just that we have to ask the questions, are we moving, are we higher, about each object in the system individually. So we'll see how that plays out on the board. All right. So we have the before and after picture on the slide already. So I'm going to draw it a little bit smaller um, up here. Because rather than, in, instead of having to circle what's before and what's after, there's enough happening in the problem that we just have the separate picture for before and after. So in the before situation, the 10 kilogram block is up in the air and the four kilogram block is not moving. Okay? We are holding the system in place until we start the problem and so nothing is moving, but this thing is higher in the air by a height of 60 centimeters, which is 0.6 meters. We take 60 centimeters and then we divide by 100 centimeters per meter. The after picture here is when we look at these two blocks, the 10 kilogram block is gonna drop and the four kilogram block will then be pulled upwards. And so the 10 kilogram block is on the ground by the time we talk about the end of the problem and the four kilogram block is up in the air by again a height of 0.6 meters. Now the key thing is that this one is being moved upwards as the whole system is going around and this one as it hits the ground is still moving. This is a misconception that we've been dealing with since the um, chapter 2, the end of chapter 2, where we need to make sure we understand that for our physics problems, they are objects are still moving when they hit the ground. Because the additional physics of what happens when they hit the ground and bounce or splat, that's stuff that happens in chapter 8, which is now, not too far in the future, but it's still additional separate physics that goes into a different physics problem. So our, as soon as we are about to touch the ground, the object is still moving and we cut off the, the physics problem for this chapter. Okay, so for our before situation, when we think about kinetic energy in the before picture, so this is going to be before, we're asking ourselves, is the object moving? But now we're asking ourselves, is the 10 kilogram block moving? And the answer is zero. And then we're asking ourselves in the before picture, is the four kilogram block moving? And our answer is zero. In our after picture here, we are also asking about kinetic energy. And the key thing is that we have to recognize that both of the objects are moving. Anytime that we have two objects tied together, they both have to move in the same way. We saw that back in chapter four and five. We're going to see that again here in chapter seven. And so it may be worth taking a moment, pausing the video if you need to, and writing down a reminder to yourself that when objects are tied together, they have to move in the same way. They both move or they're both stationary. And when they are both moving, they move with the same speed. That's what we mean by moving in the same way. So this one, the 10 kilogram block, I'm just gonna have to write it in to make it clear for ourselves, is gonna have a speed, V, and, I know it's small, the four kilogram block is also going to be moving with a speed V. So both of the kinetic energy terms exist here. The other type of energy that we currently have is gravity. And so we're asking ourselves for each object, is that object higher? The 10 kilogram block in the before picture is higher than the 10 kilogram block is in the after picture. So we would have m times g times h for the 10 kilogram block. So to be really specific, I'm going to multiply it. Instead of just saying m, I'm going to say 10. 
And then the four kilogram block is lower here, so it's not higher. That's a zero for that one. So this is a 10 times G times H, and then zero. And the potential energy from gravity for this two object problem. So we've already said that the 10 kilogram block is not moving, so that'll be zero for us. But now in the after picture, the four kilogram block is higher in the air than it was later in the problem. And so we would write MGH normally, but to be specific for ourselves, we want to make it really clear to ourselves that it's only in this example, in the after picture, the four kilogram block that is higher at the end. So when we look for any work terms, so I'm just going to write it here because it's not before or after, is there work terms? We want to remind ourselves that what we are looking for are any forces that are contributing to um, energy being added to the system or taken away from it. Now, for this 10 kilogram block, there's gravity down and there's tension up. And for this four kilogram block, there's gravity down and tension up. And if we look at how those forces act throughout the problem, first of all, gravity is not ever going to contribute a work term because that's what the potential energy of gravity already is dealing with. It is the way that gravity is um, adding or subtracting energy in the system. For the tension, though, we can look at how the tension internal to the system can't be contributing a work term because for the 10 kilogram block, as the 10 kilogram block falls, the tension is pointing opposite the motion, so that would seem to take away energy. It would be a negative work term because the force and the direction of motion are opposite each other. But that four kilogram block is moving up and the tension is also up, and so that would look like work is being added to the system. And because the tension is the same for both and the amount of motion is the same for both, that cancels itself out because it's all internal to the system. So there is no additional work added term from that tension because it's internal to the system and is only moving energy from one of the blocks to the other and is not creating an overall addition or subtraction of energy. Okay, so as always, we do our energy before. plus our work added, equals our energy after. And we notice that this process is now back to being exactly how it was for all of the problems that only had one object. The only difference is that we had to ask and answer those questions for each object. So there's more terms to possibly consider. But once we look at what happens here, for this one, because there's enough terms and not enough space, I'm not going to write the zeros out. But for energy before, we have 0 plus 0 plus 10 times g, which is 9.8, times the height, which is 0 0.6 meters plus zero. For the work term, there's no work, so that would be zero. And then for the after, we have one half times 10 times v squared. And so to bring this term down to the bottom, I'm just going to already do the one half times 10. So again, you can pause and rewind the video if it's not clear what I'm doing. But one half times 10 is five times v squared. Then for this term here, 1 half times 4 times v squared, I'm going to do the same thing to save some space. 1 half times 4 is 2, so we're adding 2 v squared to the overall problem here at the bottom. Plus 0, we're going to ignore that one. And then 4 times g times h is 4 times 9.8 times, running out of space, 0.6 meters. Okay, so we can plug some stuff in. First of all, that left side is going to be 58.8. So 58.8 .8 is the whole left side. And then the right side 
if we look, we have five of these v squareds and two of these v squareds. And so we have seven total of the things that are attached to v squared. Okay? And then in our calculator, we can plug in 4 times 9.8 times 0.6. And we get 23.5, so we'll add plus 23.5. So then to solve for v squared, there's a couple of extra steps of algebra. So I'm going to make sure that we have it in view. I'm going to bring it up to the top here. So we're going to subtract 23.5 from both sides. And now I'm going to switch over to purple for the rest of it. So 58.8 minus 23.5 is 35.3. These go away. And then we have 7v squared. So we'll divide both sides by 7. So 35.3. Oops. Divided by 7. We're going to get 5.04. So 5.0 equals v squared. So we'll take the square root of both sides. And what we get is that v is equal to the square root of 5, 2.2 or 2.24 meters per second. And that's our final answer here. That speed is how fast the 10 kilogram block is falling when it hits the ground, which is what the question itself is asking. But that is also the same speed as the four kilogram block going up in the air. And so again, we found a single value for the speed because both of the objects are moving. We have to include both of their terms in the kinetic energy, but the speed is the same for both. Remember, this isn't velocity. We don't care about the fact that one of those um, arrows points up and one of those arrows points down because energy itself is not a vector. So that 2.2 meters per second is how fast the whole system is rotating around, uh, and so it answers our question for the speed of the 10 kilogram mass as it is hitting the ground. All right, I'll see you in the next one.